Eu queria que você I would like you to pay close attention to what we are going to tell you today. Nós temos a apostila que We have the handout that gives you a better idea of the subject we are talking about, the mysteries of faith. I don't really read everything here, but when you go home, you can take time to read it over and keep it in mind. But what we are going to explain here is much more than what is written on the handout. When we talk about thoughts, we have to consider the fact that your whole life depends on your thoughts. My whole life depends on my thoughts. My thoughts are the guider of my life. If my thoughts are according to God's thoughts, there's no one that can destroy my life. There is neither demons nor evil spirits, witchcraft, obia. There is nothing that can destroy me. There's no envy or jealousy, none of that. This stuff can work against those whose thoughts are not being guided or coordinated according to the thoughts of God. When we seek to give people the knowledge of the Bible, in reality, we are dealing with God's thoughts. They are the thoughts of God. Of course, it's obvious. If you engage a medical college, your thoughts will be according to the medical teachings. So you have to apply them in order for you to be a good doctor. Well, the same thing happens concerning the word of God. The Lord Jesus said the following words. The thief came, referring to the devil. He came to kill, steal, and destroy. Observe this. This is in John chapter 10, verse 10. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. John chapter 10 and verse 10. You see that you read these words many times already. But you might ask yourself, how can the thief kill, steal, and destroy? How does the devil do so? He does so through the thoughts or the minds that are available to him. The devil does not manifest himself physically. It's spirit. And just as God gives us his thoughts through his Holy Spirit, his inspirations and ideas, for instance, uh, Solomon's temple, whose idea was that? The idea of the Holy Spirit. The work of the universal church. What is it? It's an inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It didn't come from intelligence or it wasn't an intelligent person who created it. It didn't come out of the blue. It came from the Holy Spirit. Just as the Holy Spirit uses the mind of his servants, the devil, which is also spirit, uses the mind of its servants. 
God has his children, and the devil also has his children. So the devil uses its children to destroy or to try to destroy humanity, the human beings. Not just its own children, but also, if possible, the children of God. Just as God's Spirit comes, He said, I came to bring life and life more abundantly. But how can He bring life and life more abundantly? Should I sit back and wait for this life to come to me, to my house? No, it will never happen like that. So He inspires me for me to take actions and then I take possession of what He promises. Therefore, everything starts here in the mind, in our thoughts. Your battle, your war is constant, as my war is constant. Our war is daily, it's constant. And the conflicts happen here inside our mind. On one hand, the heart is pulling us to the things of the flesh, the will of the flesh. But on the other hand, the mind is saying, no, I cannot do that. So there are two voices, God's voice and the voice of the flesh, the voice of the world, the voice of people. Anyway, so the strongest voice will prevail inside your mind. Which voice has been guiding your life? Don't think that just because you attend in church, oh, I come to church once, twice a week, I'm already satisfied, I've fulfilled my vows with God, I've gone to church, now I'm free to do any other thing. Yeah, thinking like that, you lost. You lost. Because your faith my faith, our faith, depends on hearing God's words. You have got to hear God's words. You have got to always hear and think and meditate on God's words. Because that's what leads us to life. It's the word of God that leads us to take right actions which will bring us the benefits. You know very well that what you plant today is what you're going to reap tomorrow. There's no other way. Whether you are good or bad, religious or non-religious, whether you have faith or not, whether you have the Holy Spirit or not, whatever you plant today, you're going to reap tomorrow. There's no other way. Your thoughts can be both the source of your life or the source of your death. The Bible says that if we confess that we are weak, we are going to be weak. And if we confess our strength, we are going to be strong. That's why the biblical text says, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. It means the thought must be thinking on great things positively. If you don't do so, you might come to church, pray, fast, give offering. You might do whatever you want. You can live on the altar. Nothing is going to happen. Your life will be a failure. Because your thought is sovereign. God has given you the right to think and do things according to your own head, your own mind. For God is not like an emperor or tyrant. Although he is the Lord of all things, the Almighty God, sovereign, yet he gives us the right to choose. 
inclusive permite a ação do diabo and he even allows the work of the devil because God doesn't want anyone to follow him by force or obligation. Not at all. Lucifer was the main angel, the archangel that guided the others. But he had the right to rebel he had the right to aspire even God's position. And that's why he was cast out of heaven. So you have the same right. I have the same right. We have the right to use our lives, to do with our lives whatever we want. You have a body. That body belongs to you. If you want to smoke, you can do so. Tomorrow, if you get a cancer, a cancer in your lungs, don't blame God. Oh, God, why did I get this cancer? You smoked. You filled your lungs with toxic substances. After all, we were not created to be a chimney. Yes or no? Everything in life has a function. But a function for our good. Inside the discipline of God's kingdom. When a person lives in God's kingdom, he submits his thoughts to the thoughts of God and live under a discipline, under an order. He knows his limits and does not exceed them. That's what we call faith. That's the faith God has given us. The faith that gives us a discernment of what is right and what is wrong. He gave us a body so that this body may be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen? What is your opinion about this temple here? What do you think about Solomon's temple? Is it beautiful? Is it wonderful? Do you feel well inside this temple? Very well. Your body is more important than this temple. It must be more beautiful than this temple here. Because your body, as well as my body, must be the temple of the Holy Spirit. But if we are undisciplined with our bodies, then we are going to reap the fruits of that indiscipline. So, be aware that the devil has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But how can the devil do so? I'm asking you. By using its thoughts, ideas, inspirations, inserting in people's minds, the ones who do not have the mind of the Lord Jesus, that they have to take wrong actions, that they have to make bad choices. For instance, you are driving your car and your cell phone rings. Then you take off your eyes from what you are doing and with the other hand, you grab your cell phone to check who is calling you. You are curious to know who is calling you. That's it. It's over. It takes just an oversight. You cross the red light and sometimes end up killing others 
or killing yourself. Is it God's fault? Not at all. The devil used someone to call you for you to answer the phone and also if possible to send a reply just to distract your eyes and kill you. You see that this stuff is very subtle. Very, very subtle. The battle that you and I face daily, all the time, is constant, hard. And we have to have our minds absorbed by God's advices for us not to get distracted. Because just a simple oversight can lead us to death or not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes or no? I was talking with Bishop Clodomir and he was saying that a lady came to church and manifested with evil spirits. And I was questioning the evil spirit. What do you put inside her mind? Or inside her husband's mind? Because they were not having intercourse for over two months. Why? What have you been doing? What have you been putting inside his mind? And the evil said, I make him look at her and think she is ugly. I make him compare his wife to other women, a beautiful woman. Then he gets discouraged. He feels disgust of her. But who did so? Who does so? The devil, the evil spirit. Just to make them despise one another and the marriage and destroy the children's lives. Anyway, it's a hell. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Think about a professional, a painter, a plumber that is going to do something at your house. And they do everything wrong. Everything goes wrong. You lose your money. You spend time. Anyway, it's a hell. Why? Think about a lawyer that you trust in him so much. You even give him some upfront money for him to defend your case. And out of a sudden, that bad lawyer joins your enemy and ends up putting you at disadvantage. My friends, your mind has to be attentive 24 hours per day. That's why the Lord Jesus said, watch. Yes, he talks about the importance of prayer. It's very important to pray. Prayer is very important. It's our communication with God. But even more important than our prayer is watching. Do not surrender your life to anyone, my friends. Do not trust your life in anyone's hands. Because no one can save you. But the Lord Jesus, how can he do so? Guiding, advising, correcting, exhorting, inspiring you. Watch out. Amen? Watch out. For you not to get disappointed, quotation marks, in your faith. Because God has given us the word. He has given us the word. We read the word. And for us to understand it, we have to meditate on it. Amen? You meditate on it. You think on it. You reason. You use your intellect. It's not an emotion. God's words don't bring emotions. Emotions are brought by actors, actresses, 
in cinema, television. That's what brings emotions. But God's words bring intelligence, wisdom, reason, spirit. God's words are spirit and truth. Amen? Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When you read a book, no matter the author, when you read that book, you drink, you absorb the thoughts of its author, the author of that book. And if the author of that book is a demon-possessed man, be sure that you absorb the spirit of the devil that is in him. Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you want a proof of that? Do you want a proof? If you read a book of action, you get excited, ready to fight. Yes or no? Everything depends on the source you drink from. What you drink will influence your inner self. And if you drink what is bad, for sure your actions, your attitudes will be bad. Your actions will reflect what you have drunk. Amen? Yes or no? A guy does his job more than what his body can manage. He drives a truck, a bus, some extra hours. There's an overburden because the boss said, listen, you have to make a way and deliver this stuff somewhere until such and such day. And the guy keeps on driving and driving, but everybody has a limit. To the point, he cannot manage it anymore. His eyes might be opened, but his mind is off. That's why there are many car crashes on the road. Because the guy was overtired. Devil was inspiring the guy, telling him, go, go, go ahead, you can manage it. It's like the addicted person. The devil says, listen, just one more time. And when he least expected, his life was destroyed. Your thought, my friends. How are your thoughts? How have they been? What harms you? What makes you lose your reason? What makes you lose the discernment between what is right and wrong? The Bible teaches that whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, meditate on these things. Isn't it what is written? And that's what we have to practice. Therefore, my friends, the faith that gives us access to God's greatness depends on a pure mind, a clean mind. Yes, we all make mistakes. We all have faults. Who does not have a fault? Only one person never made a mistake was the Lord Jesus. But all of us make mistakes. And we will all make mistakes as well. I will make a mistake. I'm not making a mistake right now. But I know that sooner or later I will make a mistake. 
Sometimes we make mistakes unconsciously. Unconsciously we do things that we were not supposed to do. I mean, my mind has to be pure for me to commit less mistakes, for me to do things right, and also to conquer more. Anyway, for my work to bear more fruits. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? And all of that depends on my mind. I don't need to give ears to A, B, C, or D. I must give ears only to God's voice. You know, when I was a young guy, a converted guy, I wanted to save souls. I was about 20 years old. And I had the desire to leave everything and preach the gospel. But I said to the Holy Spirit, Oh my God, if you do not guide me, I will not go anywhere. Because I'm not going to do anything, anything for you without your guidance. I don't care about what so and so thinks or such and such did. I don't want to know about all the things people did. What do you want me to do? If you do not guide me, I'm going to damage my life. Because I'm not going to follow anyone or what other people are doing. I'm not going to guide my work according to what so-and-so is doing. I'm going to walk alone. Either you are with me or you are not with me. If you are with me, I'm going to conquer greatly. But if you are not with me, I'm going to wreck my life. Because my thoughts could not be subjected to the opinions of others. Imagine if I had given ears to other people. There are so many people who hate me. Yes or no? So many people criticizing me. Anyway, but this is the secret. Hearing God's words. Let's observe how the men of, of the past used to act. These are the ones, the men of faith, these are the ones we have to look up to. For example, Abraham, Isaac, Israel, etc. One day, David called Solomon his son. You can read that with me in 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and verse 9. He said, observe David's advice to Solomon. He said, as for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind. A willing mind. For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. All the intent of the thoughts. It means, it means God knows all the intent of my thoughts, of your thoughts. He knows. He knows everything. He knows why you are here. He knows if you are here now, at this very moment, to drink from the Holy Spirit, to know what God wants for you, or if you came here just to receive a prayer from Bishop Macedo. If you came just to receive a prayer from Bishop Macedo, 
Then you're going to come out of this place with a prayer. I'm going to pray for you. Just that. But if you came seeking to drink of the thoughts of God, how to proceed, how to behave, how to do things in your life, at home, at work, on the road, wherever you go, then he will satisfy your mind. He will strengthen your mind. Amen? What are you here for? What are you here for? And he completes saying, For the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. That's it. It's give and take. God is love, God is compassion, God is mercy, God is good, God is this and that. But wait a minute, observe here. God is righteous, He is justice. If you seek Him, He will be found by you. But if you forsake Him, He will cast you off forever. It means give and take. The same way you give him, he gives you back. That's the reason why there are so many people inside churches, including here, live a sad life. Because they just want to receive from Him. They are seeking to receive from God. They want to eat. They want to drink. They want to be satisfied. They want all from God. But they don't want to sacrifice their being, their will, in order to please God. They don't want to sacrifice their sinful lives in order to follow the thoughts and the words of God. They don't want to walk in integrity. They want God's benefits, but they don't want to sacrifice their lives. Therefore, my friends, nothing is going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying, my friends? Yes or no? The fact that you are attending the universal church of the kingdom of God, being a member, a tither, an offering giver, do not guarantee you are going to have God's plenitude in your life. The plenitude of God depends on your total surrender to Him. Amen? It doesn't matter if you are a pastor, bishop, if you are this or that. If you have a diploma, you even do charitable works. All of that is irrelevant. Because what matters indeed is what is written here. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Observe that David did not say to his son, Oh, listen, Solomon, come here. You are my son. I have a heart according to God's heart. That's why God will bless you. You are going to conquer greatly. Be sure you can live your life anyhow because he will bless you. Because you are my son. No way. He said if you forsake him. He will cast you off forever. 
You receive things according to what you offer. Actually, when I say you, I mean all of us. We receive according to what we give. It was Jesus himself who said so, wasn't he? He said here in the book of Luke chapter 6 and verse 38, he says, Actually, in the verse 37, judge, 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 judge not, and you shall not be judged. You see, it's give and take. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Again, it's give and take. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. It's give and take. Give, and it will be given to you. Again, it's give and take. But how? Good measure. You see that he commands us to give. Good measure. Press down shaken together and running over will be put into your bosom. It's give and take. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. It's give and take. That's it. It's very clear. Do I need to explain this? Do I? Of course not. Anyone can understand this. Even the most demon-possessed person on the earth will understand that if he does not give, he will not receive. And according to what he gives, he is going to receive. There is no other alternative. There is no other way. It's either yes or no. This is God's mind, the mind of the Lord Jesus. Amen.